manamati Vishuchi putram atra surupam Rupam tas chakra jamuri puri maturi Radha Kunda Magirimanam Oh Radhika Madhvasam Rabdo Yasya Pratita Kripaya Sri Guru Tamnatosmi Gurave Gaura Chandrai Radhikai Tadali Krishna Yak Krishna Bhaktai Tad Bhaktai Anamon Anandali Lamaya Vikrahai E Mabadabyats Chavi Sundarai Tas my maha premarasapradaya Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste spiritual guru day asmadeya parmaradatam guru pada padma nitrila pravishta om vishnu par astotra satasvi rupa anuga chayavarya sila bhakti vedanta narayan goswami maharaj secondly i offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my param guru dev to srila prabhupada Param Puja Pad Sila Bhakti Vaibhav Puri Goswami Maharaj Param Puja Pad Sila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj Param Puja Pad Sila Bhakti Rakshak Shira Dev Goswami Maharaj To Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhansa Thakur and all of his Satparsha Dabrinda, his eternal associates and to our entire Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Pad. And finally, I offer my pranam to Param Pooja Padshri, Bhaktalok Paramadvaiti Maharaj, 
श्री भक्ति वेदांत जाति महाराज अनोदय सब वैष्णव सब वैष्णव इस बन चकल पतुरु बसा कृपा सिंधु बिया बसा पुदीता नाम पावने बियो वैष्णव जय श्री गुरुदेव की जय By the causes mercy of Sri Guru and Goranga, for now for the third day, we are honoring the divine appearance, the sweet birth in this world of our Swamini. King Kriyavatsala, who is very, very affectionate to her maidservants, Bhishwabhanu Nandini Shimati Radhanani. Perhaps you know, in chapter 8 of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a description of how Vasudev Maharaj in Mathura, thinking Krishna is my son, but I have taken him and left him in the care of Nanda Maharaj in Gokul Mahavan. But still he is my son, so I have a responsibility to arrange for his samskars, hmm? the purificatory ceremonies. So now he has been born, but he has not been given a name. So, I should send my Purohit, my own family priest of the Yadu dynasty, Garga Acharya, to Gokul. And there he can perform the Namkaran Samskar of Sri Krishna. But he will have to do it secretly. Because if Kangsa Maharaj finds out that my family priest is going there to Namkaran Sanskar, then he will suspe suspect that this is the eighth child of Devaki. The Devatas in Akashvani, a voice in the sky, had said, Oh Kamsa, you fool, the eighth issue of Devaki will kill you. Hmm? So, on the one hand, I should arrange for Krishna's Namkar and Sanskar, but on the other hand, it should be done very secretly, so that Kams Maharaj does not become suspicious. So, Bhastir Maharaj opened his heart to Gagacharya, and Gagacharya from Mathura set off, and from Mathura he crossed the river, and he came to Gokul Mahavan. <coughs> when <coughs> Nanda Baba received Gagacharya, he was overjoyed. Why? Because Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastrika, Ilava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhiva. He was thinking, now today I'm fortunate because I will get Sadhu Sangha of the great Acharya, Garga Acharya. Nanda Maharaj is far superior in praying to Garga Acharya. But because Krishna's human like pastimes are going on, he feels himself, I am a fallen Grihastha, very attached to my family, especially my son. So to be attached to your family members is a dosh, it is a fault. But for Nanda Maharaj, it is not a dosh, it's a gun. It's not a fault, it's a great virtue, because his son just happens to be Atva Gyan Paratattva, the supreme non-dual absolute reality. But he's thinking, I am attached householder. So when Gagacharya arrived there, Nanda Maharaj, he gave pranam to him. He did puja to him. He washed his lotus feet and sprinkled the water on his head and 
the heads of his family members and household servants. And he prayed to Gagacharya. Nanda Maharaj said, Mahat Vichalanam, Narinam, Grihi Nam, Dina Chaita Sam, Nisraya Saya Bhagavan, Kalpate Nanyata Kochit. O Gagacharya, great personalities like you, sadhus, pure Vaishnavas, they're always wandering here and there. Hmm? And they visit the house of the griha, Grihasta, hmm? household persons. Gagacharya himself is Grihasta, but he is a sadhu, not attached. So, he's saying great sadhus like you are going here and there and visiting the householders. What Dina Chaitasam? That means, one meaning is, their consciousness is very low. But another meaning is, those persons who are Dina Chaitasa, that means, Trinada Pisuni Chena, more humble than a blade of grass, without any pride. If a sadhu will come to them, they'll have his darshan and listen to his kata. Very easily, they'll attain Krishna Prem. So Nanda Maharaj said, great sadhus like you are always going here and there. I know that you've come here not for your own purpose. A sadhu, bona fide guru, is not going here and there to get anything for himself, only to give to others. Because Vaishnava is Atmaramas Chamonayo Negranta Apiru Krami. Kurvanta Hoitikin Bhaktim Ittam Bhuta Ganohari. Atmaram, Sadhu is self-satisfied. They don't need anything. They're serving Krishna because Krishna is so wonderful. Hmm? <coughs> so, if a so-called Sadhu or Guru is going here and there only collecting money, he's not a Guru, he's a kangaroo. <laughs> because kangaroo has a pocket and they're collecting to put everything in their pocket. Hmm? So, Nanda Maharaj said, Nisraya Sai Bhagavan, you are going here and there only to bring about the good fortune of everyone you meet. Kalpate Nanyata Kochit. One should never even imagine that when a sadhu leaves his ashram to wander around the world, that he has any purpose to fulfill other than to bring the mangal, mangal daena, to bring good fortune to all the living entities around the world. So in this way, Nanda Maharaj praised Gagacharya. Hmm? Gagacharya said, hmm? Sorry, Nanda Maharaj said, You know, I have a son just born and I have not done the sanskara, so it's my great fortune that you've come here. So I request you, please, can you do the Namkara and sanskar and the horoscope? Hmm? You are expert, you know Jyotish, by which a human being can know about his past life and future in this life and future lives also. So you know Jyotish, but can you make the horoscope of my son and do his name-giving ceremony? Then Gagacharya was thinking, oh, that's why I came here. And now without even uh, suggesting this, Nanda Baba, he has come up with this idea, but I should warn him. So Gagachar told him, it will not be good if it's done openly. Hmm? Because Kamsa Maharaj may suspect something. So we should do it very secretly, not in front of others. Where can we do this ceremony secretly? Nanda Baba said, in my Goshala. Hmm? Have you been there? Nanda Baba's Goshala in Gokul Mahavish. So in my Goshala. Why? Because if you want to do a sanskar, some ceremony, our yakya, then you have to first purify the whole place. And it will take a long time. But Goshala is always pure. Hmm? There's cow dung everywhere. <laughs> so cow dung is pavitra, completely pure. So, so we can go secretly into the cow shed in the Goshala and you can do the ceremony there because it's already pure. So then 
Bhagacharya agreed. And they went to the Goshala and Gagacharya began to uh, calculate the astrological chart of Krishna and also look at his palms as well because he knew palmistry and by the combination of the astrological chart and the palms then Gagacharya could know everything. So there Gagacharya made all the calculations and then he said to uh, Nanda Maharaj Asanvarnastrayo yasya grihito nu yugam tanu shukla raktas tatha pita idanim krishna tam gata your son appears in different yugas in, uh, and according to those yugas he has different complexion hmm? so shukla raktas tatha pita idanim krishna tam gata his shukla white rakta red Pita, golden, and Idanim Krishna Tamgata, now he is dark. He has the complexion like a fresh rain cloud. Krishna, Shamkal. So it's very deep. Why? Because in Sati Yuga, the incarnation of the Supreme Lord is named Shukla Avatar and his wife. In Treta Yuga, is a red incarnation called Yagya. Now it was uh, Dwarpa Yuga when Bhagacharya was speaking. So Idanim Krishna Tamgataha. And now it is the uh, Krishna Sham. And one color is left, Pita, golden. So one color is left golden and one Yuga is left, Kali Yuga. So there we see that Gagacharya 5,000 years ago, 4,500 years before the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, has uh, looked in the horoscope of Krishna and the palms of his hand and said that your son Krishna will appear in Kali Yuga. Satinandan Gauri Ki Another meaning. Shukla Raktas Dhapita Idanim Krishna Tamgataha means all the Yuga avatars, Manvantara avatars, Leela avatars, Idanim Krishna Krishna Tamgata now Idanim have entered into the body of Krishna. Hmm? So Mahadang Sayukto, all the various forms of Supreme Lord are present within Sri Krishna. He is the Purna Shakti Man. Hmm? So Gagacharya, he told Nanda Maharaj, Anina Sarva Durgani. Hmm? You will cross over all obstacles in your life. Hmm? How? Oh, by having affection for this boy. Everyone who will have affection for this boy will not be defeated, just as the demigods are not defeated by the demons. When they are, the demigods are not defeated by the demons due to the support of Lord Vishnu. So in the same way, those who have love for your son, then anina sarva durgani yuyam anjas tarisyata they will cross over all obstacles. Mm. Gagacharya said, in conclusion, Tasman Nandatma Jo Yamte Narayana Samogone Sriyakirtan Bhavina Gopayasya Samahitaha. In conclusion, he said, Oh Nanda Baba, your son. Tasman Nandatmajo, your Nandatmaja, direct son of Nanda Maharaj. Your son has qualities. Narayana Samo Gunai. Just like Lord Narayan. So it's very important here. Sriya Kirtan Bhavena. He is the beauty and fame. He is just like Lord Narayan. So, Gopayasva Samahita, you should take care of him and protect him very, very carefully, very attentively. This is the general meaning of the verse. What does it mean he has qualities not the same as Lord Narayan, but like Lord Narayan? That means whatever qualities Lord Narayan has, Krishna has, but not exactly the same, 
Because Krishna has more qualities than Lord Narayan. Lord Narayan has 60 transcendental qualities, main. He has unlimited, but 60 are prominent. Krishna has all those 60 qualities, but Krishna has four qualities that Lord Narayan does not have. Krishna has Rupa Madhuri, his sweetness of his human-like form. Venu Madhuri, the sweetness of his flute playing. Leela Madhuri, the sweetness of his pastimes. And Prema Madhuri, he's surrounded by devotees who have such a love. The devotees of Lord Narayan don't have even the smell of such love as the Rajabhasis. So, Tasman Nandat Majoyamte Narayana Sumogonai. Now, there's a secret in the words of Gagacharya. He said, Sriyakirtyanu Bhavena Gopayasa Samahita. Here, Sriya means along with Sri Radharani. So, here, Gagacharya, sometimes people think Radharani is not mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. But there, in many places in Srimad Bhagavatam, in a covered way, she has been mentioned. So, Sriya, along with Radhika, Krishna descends to this world. Kirtyanu Bhavena, from the womb of Kirti Damaya. So, Sriya Kirtan Bhavena, Gopiyasa Samaveta. Gagacharya said, describing, because our subject is the appearance of Radharani, eh? for three days. So, we're coming to that point. That, oh, when Krishna appears, then Sri, that is his beautiful Shakti, his Purna Shakti, also appears, Kirtan Bhavena, from the womb of Kirti the Devi. Gopayasva Samahita. Gopayasva means you should protect, you should take care, you should do the Paricharya Seva. This is Gagacharya giving an instruction to all the sadhakas of the world. Samahita, very carefully, you should render the Paricharya Seva. All the intimate services of bathing, dressing, decorating, feeding, massaging, fanning. In all these services you should remember, you should render to Radha and Krishna both. Not only Krishna, but also Sriya Kirtana Bhavena, the Kirtina Putri, the daughter of Kirtina Maya. So, Krishna is Sarva Shakti Man, the origin of all powers, all Shakti. He is the Vishay Vigra, the object of all love, and Radhika is the Ashray Vigraha, the shelter of praying for Sri Krishna. So she is incomparable. If any devatas, if any goddesses exist in this world and beyond this world, whatever power they have, oh, this is all just the angsa or kala, a portion or a portion of a portion of the greatness of Srimati Radharani. So, Sila Uragunath Das Goswami has said, Ratin Gauri Lilaya Pita Pati Sondar Yakirane Sachi Lakshmi Satya Paripavata Sobhagya Balane Vasi Karais Chandra Vali Mukanabina Braja Sati Chipatyarad Yatam Hari Daita Radham Pajamana Oh my dear mind <coughs> He's not giving instructions to others. Hmm? I am not instructing you. I am instructing myself. Hmm? You are listening just to make sure I don't make a mistake so that you can correct me. So, we should not have the Abhiman that I will teach, I will instruct others. Hmm? I can chastise and I can correct others. So Raghunath Taska Swami, he is setting the example. He is preaching to his own mind. Oh my dear mind, wicked mind, you are my brother because we are both born on the same day. <laughs> so you should not give me any problems. Brothers should be friends. Oh my dear mind, please worship continuously the lotus feet of Radharani because Ratin Gauri Lilei Api Tapati Sondarya Tilanai. Radharani is so beautiful that the rays of her beauty are spreading out. 
And if she will be seen by Rati, Rati means the wife of Cupid. Kam Dev, Cupid, is a god of love in the material world. That means lust. There's no love in the material world. So his wife is Rati, very beautiful. But when Rati sees the beauty of Radhika, then she's burning. Oh, she feels I am nothing. Not only Rati, Rati Gauri. Gauri means uh, Durga, the wife of Mahadev, Lord Shiva, also. So Lord Shiva is more powerful than Kamdev because Kamdev came and tried to shoot him with an arrow and disturb him. But Lord Shiva became angry and fire came from his third eye and incinerated Cupid, nothing was left. So Cupid, he used to have an anger, a body, but now his body was burnt by Lord Shiva, so he became Alanga. One name of Cupid is Alanga. So, Gauri, the, the wife of Lord Shiva, is even more powerful than Cupid. If she will see Radhika, this is also being burned by the rays of Radhika's beauty. She cannot compare, she cannot compete. Hmm? Ratim Gauri Lile. Lila means the Lila Shakti of Lord Narayan. Lord Narayan has three main Shaktis, Bhu, Nila and Sri. So Lila, so Lord Narayan is also superior to Lord Shiva. So each name, Ratim Gauri Lila is going up, up, up. If Lila, the Shakti of Lord Narayan, will hear about the beauty of Radhika even, then, oh, she's burning by the rays of Radhika's beauty, only hearing. Not only that, but Sachi, Lakshma, Lakshmi, Satya, Paribhavata, Sobhagya, Balanai. And when Sachi, Sachi means the wife of Lord Indra. Lord Indra is the king of heaven. So Sachi has a very high position. Hmm. And Indra is always drinking Amrita, it makes him very lusty. So she's always enjoying with Indra in Swargalok, in Indralok. But she cannot control her husband like Radhika can control Krishna. So that is called Sobhagya. The good fortune of a woman is how she can control her husband. Hmm. Not by nagging. Hmm. Only by words. And he comes running, hmm? not by force, by by brain. Hmm? You know, it is said in this material world, when a young man meets a young woman, then he thinks, "Oh, she is Chandramukhi, <laughs> very beautiful. Her face is Chandramukhi, like the moon, and nectar is coming from the moon." Hmm? But then, after some time, when they're living together for some time. Then she becomes Surya Mukhi. Now nectar is not coming, but heat is coming, like the sun, burning. <laughs> and then after living for, together for a little more time, then she becomes Jala Mukhi. Jala means the volcano. You know, fire is coming out from the volcano. <laughs> so this is called Maya in the material world. The description of the love of the material world. So cold. So Sachi, the wife of um, Indra, she is uh, diminished completely by the fortune of Radhika. Sachi, Lakshmi, Lakshmi, that is Mahalakshmi Sri, the supreme consort of Lord Narayan. She is also defeated by the good fortune. And Satya, Satya means Satya Bahama. Satya Bhama is beyond Vaikuntha. In Maha Vaikuntha of Dwarka, Satya Bhama is there. Hmm? But sometimes, if uh, Krishna is upset with her, then he, he will. Hmm? If the, sorry, she's upset with him, then she'll go in Maha and hide in the Kopa Bhavan and think Krishna should come here and he should come and pacify me. But Krishna doesn't go. Hmm? Then Krishna will tell one of the maidservants, or tell that foolish daughter of Shatrudi to come here at once. Hmm? And she doesn't have the vishvas, she does not have the confidence in her pranay, her feeling of oneness with Krishna, that she can maintain that man, that sulky mood. And so then, she puts on her ornaments, she threw off all the ornaments before in anger. Now she has to put them all on again, and then come very humbly into the assembly of of Krishna, just hiding behind a pillar. Oh, what will my husband say? He's radical like this? 
No. Radical in Tower Krishna. Jahi Mahadava Jahi Keshava Mahabada Kaita Bhavadam. Get out of here, Krishna. I don't want to see your black face here again. Shatoon Yam Narak Shapunari Yamaha. I have my pride. And you are a cheetah, so get out from here. Go, go, go. And Krishna will have to go. So Satyabhama cannot do that. So Sachi Lakshmi Satya Paribhavata So Bhagyabalani Vasikara is Chandravali Mukanavina Prajasati and also Chandravali is completely vanquished by Radhika's power over Sri Krishna. with all the Braja Gopis and Radhika was late. So when she arrived there, she said, Oh, Krishna started without me. Ah. <laughs> we'll see about that. And she approached Krishna and when Krishna, who was sitting with so many Gopis around him, all serving him, looked and saw Radhika, she turned around and disappeared into the darkness of the forest. Mm -hmm. At that time, all the celebrations were stopped. Chattakoti Gopi Madhavaman Thousands and thousands of gopis, they were all trying to serve Krishna. But they could not please him. What to speak of please him? His heart was stolen by Radhika. Krishna could not even see them. He was seeing through them. And thinking, oh, where is my Srimati Ji? Hmm? And there and then, oh, in the presence of all the gopis, see Krishna got up and he left them all. Kamsari api sangsara basana bara srinkalam radam adaya riday tachaja braja sundari. Oh, we've been discussing. How many qualities of Radharani? 25. 25 qualities. So 12 we discussed yesterday, and 13 we'll dis try to discuss today. So already we're coming, but not in order now. This verse, Srila Raghunath Swami is proving in this verse. That mm, Krishna Priyavali Mukya, that is the 24th quality of Radharani. That among all the beloveds of Sri Krishna, Radhika is Mukya. Yatha Radha Priya Vishnu Stasakundam Priyam Tata Sarva Gopi Shusevaika Vishnur Atyanta Vallava. Radhika is Atyanta Vallava, excessively dear to Sri Krishna. She is the uh, chain. She is the chain that binds the heart of Krishna. 
that holds together all the Rasalila. Yeah. And if radical will leave the Rasalila, then Krishna, he cannot even look at any of the other gopis. He cannot see them even. He gets up, and leaves them all behind. And he's playing his flute and calling. Oh, Radharani, come back, come back. But she's not coming. So then Krishna sits down in a kunj. Shamyatam na param kadapi Tavir sham na karuni Dehi sundari Darshana mama Manmatena dunomi Mamiya Jalita bilokya Oh Hadika, please forgive me I'll never behave like that ever again. Shamyatam na param kadapi tavidrsham na karomi. I'll never behave like that again. Dehi sundari darshana mama. Oh sundari, oh beautiful radika, please give me your darshan again. In your absence, man matena dunomi. Cupid is filling me with arrows. I cannot tolerate the pain of separation. So here it is proven, the 24th quality of Radhika, Krishna Priyavali Mukya. So Chandravali Vasikarais Chandravali Mukhanavina Brajasati Chapatya Radhya Tam Hari Radham Bajamana. To complete the verse, Raghunath Daska Swami is saying, Oh my dear mind, just worship that Radhika. She is the most dear of Krishna. And she vanquishes the pride of all the Braja, every gopi in Braja, millions, Shatakopi, Koti, Gopi, millions and millions of gopis, all their pride is diminished by the power of Radhika to, to control Krishna. Who can describe the Prema of Radhika? Words cannot touch it. So we can only describe it indirectly by the effect. Just as you cannot understand the power of a tornado. Have you ever seen a tornado? Maybe in Germany you don't have tornadoes. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. Once I was in the Midwest of America in the tornado season. And the tornado went about 50 meters from where I was hiding underground. In the shelter. And it just... And it went through a house. house disappeared. Only pieces of wood everywhere. Went through the um, the car dealership. All the cars are parked there. Brand new cars. All went up into the air and left in a pile on top of each other. <laughs> so you cannot see. You cannot even see the hurricane. All you can see is the chaos and the damage that the hurricane does. So similarly, you cannot see the frame of Radharani. You cannot describe. You cannot understand it. You can only see the chaos that it does to the heart of Krishna. <laughs> that he becomes mad. That he leaves all the other Braja Gopis and wandering around alone on the bank of Jamuna, he sits down and he's crying. Oh Cupid, please don't shoot me anymore. I will not live. Oh Radhika, please give me your darshan. Deka diya radhe rakho pran. Please give me your darshan and save my life. My pran has come up to here. It's about to... Ramnam Sate. <laughs> I cannot live for another moment without you. Uh, so this is the power of the Prema of Radhika. So Krishna Priyavali Mukya of all the beloveds of Krishna. Radhika is supreme. Achha. In this verse of Raghunath Das Goswami, he is hinting at another of the 25 qualities of Radhika. That is quality 21. Jagat Srini Lasatya Shaha. That the fame of Radharani to spreads out and illuminates the whole universe. Hmm? So in that regard, once Purnamasi Devi was glorifying Radhika. And she said that the fame of Shimati Radhika is so pure, so bright and so powerful that when it enters into the ears of Sachi, because you're coming, 
सची लक्ष्मी सत्या परि सौभाग्या Sachi, the wife of Indra, when it enters into the ear of Sachi, the wife of Indra, then she's wearing a decoration made of white jasmine, and the jasmine flowers fall from her ear. When the glories of Radhika enter into the ear of the wife of Savitri, that is the wife of Lord Brahma, then all her hairs stand on end like herbs. You see herbs growing in the forest. No, like this, like herbs all over her body. All her hairs are standing on end. Hmm? And when the fame of Radhika goes into the ear of Lakshmi Devi in Vaikuntha, she becomes stunned and she's astonished. And she's wearing earrings made of moonstones. Hmm? That is a, a Chandrakanta Mani. And when the moonstones are touched by the glorious fame of Radhika, they melt and drip down her body. Hmm? Lakshmi Devi's earrings melt by the he just hearing the fame of Shrimati Radha. Hmm? Quite incredible. So these words of Purnamasi Devi have a very deep meaning, very deep meaning and relevant to all of us, to each and every one of us. First of all, Sachi, Savitri, Lakshmi. They are higher, higher, and higher. Hmm? So, Sachi is in this material world and she's enjoying sense gratification with Indra in heaven. So, if she hears the glories of Radhika, Radhika Radhika's glories are very pure. And the jasmine flower is white and the jasmine flower is the symbol of purity. So, when the glories of Radhika touch the jasmine flower in the ear of Sachi Devi, then the jasmine flower thinks, ah, oh, this is pure. I thought I was pure, but I am not pure. But this glory is of Radhika, this is pure, and the jasmine flower becomes dizzy and falls out from the ear of Sachi Devi. Hmm? But those who are enjoying their senses cannot be touched so deeply as those who have become disgusted with sense gratification. So in Satyalok, even higher up, still in the material world, but the highest planet in the material world is Satyalok, and there our Guru, in the head of our Sampradaya, Lord Brahma, his wife, Savitri, she was there in the highest planets and she was thinking to herself, ah, sun's gratification is a disgusting. And she was completely detached from all sense objects. Hmm? But, and then, when the glories of Radhika entered into her ear, her hair stood on end. In other words, if you are still attached to hmm, sense gratification, when you hear the glories of Radhika, some effect will be there, but it will be more external. Like the more external effect on Sachi, the wife of Indra. But when it entered into the ears of the uh, Savitri, then she, because she was detached from sense gratification, it had a, the glories had a more powerful effect, so she had the Sattvic bath of romance, hair standing on end. But that's still in the material world. And Lakshmi Devi, where is she? In Vaikuntha. So beyond this material world, in Vaikuntha, in the spiritual world, Lakshmi Devi is completely pure. Completely pure. And she's full of bhakti, but not the same intensity or condensed love. Nowhere near the density of the brain of Radhika. So when she's touched by the glories of Radhika, then not only outer symptom, that is that her earrings melt, but also inner symptom, her heart is struck with wonder. Ah, Advut, Chamatkar. Hmm? Ascharya Chakit Hoge. She becomes completely stunned with amazement. So the teaching here is that we will realize the greatness the beauty, the qualities of Radhika in proportion to our own purity of heart. So Mahaprabhu said, Chaito Dharpana Maharajana Baba Mahadava Dindivarpana Always chant the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare And from this, the Chitta 
will be cleansed, the mirror of the heart will be cleansed, and the more the mirror of the heart is clean, the more one will be moved outwardly and inwardly by hearing the glories of Shimati Radhika. So, where did we get to yesterday? Binikta Karna Purna Vidagda Pataman Vidagda. Vidagda. Oh, we did not complete Vidagda because Vidagda is a big subject. Vidagda means that Radharani is expert in arts. So there are many arts. She's expert in cooking, in making garlands, in decorating. She's expert in painting pictures on the bodies and faces of her sakis in Kasturi, Chandan, and Datu minerals, colored minerals from the forest. She's expert in so many arts. She's expert in arguing with Krishna. Ukti Pratyukti, answer and response. She has very devastating repartee. Krishna cannot defeat her. She's expert in gambling games. And she's expert in singing, dancing, and playing musical instruments. And this expertise, just like the gopis say to Madhya Shoda, oh, Madhya Shoda, don't worry, your son is coming back from the forest very soon. He's, he's, just, he's on his way now, but he's just a little late, he's been held up, because so many devatas have come down from the sky, and they're doing puja to him. Because when Krishna plays on his flute, Nija Shiksha, the ragas that he himself has taught himself, it's so astonishing that Brahma and Shiva and Indra, they all, they listen, they try to understand what is that rag, but they cannot understand and they all bow down their heads in shame. Huh? So just as Krishna is Nija Shikcha, he's self-taught in singing and playing various ragas on his flute. So Radhika also, as she comes from her childhood to her Navavayaha, her ever fresh usefulness, then so many skills manifest in Radharani without even being taught by anyone else. Mm. So, especially one type of art is the art of amorous pastimes also, which has been, we will not go into details, but there's a great sage called Vatsayan Muni, and he has written Shastra of amorous pastimes. So Radhika spontaneously more expert even then Vatsayan Muni. One day, Radha Krishna, they, in the early morning, they came out from a kunj, mm? out from the kunj after their loving pastimes, and they sat on a beautiful Ratnavedi mm, platform of jewels. Mm? And then, the Brinda Devi and the Vishaka Lalita, they went into the kunj and they looked. And Brinda Devi saw, oh, there were necklaces and different ornaments broken and scattered here and there. There was a foot lack on the flower petals, here and here. There was kasturi drops here and here. And from looking at the different, mm, the various ointments and cosmetics of Radhika and Krishna, how they were uh, in spots here and there on the petals of the flowers inside the kunj. Then all Brindadeva and all the Sakis could realize Oh, Radhika is Vitagda. Very artistic in all pastimes. So then Brinda Devi, she said, Chakrida Yara Jasi Ranjita Sutra Badha Gokarna Matcha Chikara Nababidha Karna Sayam Kuta Pravara Vibrama Koshalani Radhyaja Gista Bhattavairajitam Jigaya Very beautiful verse very much related to uh, the appearance of Radharana. Brinda Devi saying, how is it possible that Radharani, just a few days ago, she was a little girl. It seems like only yesterday, Radhika was born and then she was a little girl. And how was she? Now she has very long hair in a long vein, in a long braid, like Madhuri. But when she was a little girl, Chakri the Yara Jasi, Ranjita Sutra Badha, she was uh, naked and playing in the dust. 
rolling in the dust and playing with her friends in the dust of Braja. And then she became a little older and her hair started to grow. And how was her hair? Not long in a veni. Only her mother, Chakrida Ya Rajasi Ranjita Sutra Bandha, her mother used to tie her hair in pigtails. <laughs> so Ranjita Sutra Bandha means uh, one red thread. She would tie a red thread here and a red thread here. And so her hair would be like Gokarna Matra Chikurana Babidda Karna. Her hair would be like the ears of a calf. If you see a calf, they have big ears, and the ears, they flop down like this. And they sometimes go up and down like this. So, go, go karna matra chikura nava karna. So, Radharani's hair was tied with red braids, and uh, not very long, only long enough like the ears of a cow or a calf. <laughs> and when she moves her head, they're flapping here and there on her face. <laughs> nava bitta karna. And then she got a little bit older, She's still just a little girl and she has to have the ceremony. Hmm? Bidda Karna, that is the Karna Bidda Sanskar, ear piercing ceremony. Hmm? The ear piercing ceremony. So, Brinda Devi, I remember it was just like yesterday when Radhika had her ear piercing ceremony and Kirti Damaya, her mother, she put some um, the uh, turmeric and the ghee and put it on the ear so that uh, after it's newly pierced it will recover and it will, there will be no infection and the and the newly pierced ears will recover so go karna matra chikara never bit the karna and Radhika has now earrings for the first time and the little girl is taking a mirror and looking in the mirror like this turning her head here and there to try to see how beautiful she looks now with new earrings and her short pigtails are going <laughs> left and right and the earrings are swinging rather on his look for the first time oh, what it's like to have earrings <laughs> so Brenda Davis it seems like it was only yesterday but now what happened say yam kuta pravara bibrama koshalani how did she become so expert at all the arts of love? I don't know. Even though Krishna is Ajit, he cannot be conquered by anyone. But we can see from the drops of cosmetics here, all over the petals in the Kunj, that Radhika has defeated Krishna. Mm -hmm. So in this way, as Radhika comes to Navavaya, to her mm, ever fresh adolescence, then all the arts, Vidagda, they appear in Radhika. Especially singing and playing musical instruments. Yesterday, uh, do you remember we were discussing about the Radhika's expertise in dancing? Hmm? How Radhika is so expert in dancing with every part of her body. But Kundala Gandalole Sutta Mukya Kabarasana Kantea Kastvarto Gayanta Stam Tadita Ivata Mega Chakra Vireju Silas Shukadev Goswami in complete samadhi in trance. He's seeing Radhika dancing in the Rasalila. Hmm? Every part of her body is dancing. Her eyebrows are dancing. Her lips are dancing. Her earrings are dancing. Her cloth is dancing. Her ornaments are dancing. And all the ornaments also. If you have so many bangles and uh, necklaces, the, the ne they also ring together and make a sound. So all the ornaments of Radhika are Swarup Bhut. They're part of her Swarup. They're made of bhav. So they don't just tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. But whatever rag Krishna and the gopis are singing in, in whichever key, hmm, whichever, wherever they start, then all the ornaments are also singing in that key also. And not only jingling in that key, but also jingling in the notes of that rag also. So the dancing is extraordinarily beautiful. Mm. But after some time, then Radhika and Krishna and Gopis, they become somewhat tired of their uh, dancing. This tired is not fatigue of dancing, but it's the Sanchari Bhav mm. of the uh, Glani. That becomes some, it's an ecstasy of fatigue in the Rasalila, not a material fatigue. 
And so they decide, oh, let's sing. So then Radha and Krishna, surrounded by all the Sakis, they came and they sat down on a carpet of flowers on the bank of Jamuna in the moonlight. And they sat down and they were all singing together. Radha and Krishna, all gopis were singing together. Rakta Kantyaha. Rakta Kantya Shukadeva Goswami said means the Kantya is the throat. And the Rakta means with love. From the heart they're singing at the top of their voices. And Rakta Kantya means, Rakta can also mean red. So that means that if, you, if someone chews tumble, then the juice builds up, the red juice builds up in the mouth. And then if it is a sign of beauty, if a heroine is very, very beautiful, then she sw when she's singing and she swallows the tumble and the red tumble goes down, you can see uh, some red shining through the throat in a line. So this is a sign of the extreme beauty of the naika, of the heroine. So gopis are singing from their heart at the top of their voice and chewing tambu and they swallow and rakta kanta. So both meanings are there. But then, after they've been singing, in a very beautiful way, with so many ragas, you know, there are as many species of human life as there are, there are that many ragas. So as there are 8,400,000 species of life, there are 8,400,000 ragas. Yeah. And, but among them, 16,000 ragas are used by the gopis. 16,000 of their favorite ragas are used by Braj gopis in the Rasalila. So, they were all singing together, but then Vishaka thought to herself, wait, we are all singing together. But the expertise of singing of the individual cannot be expressed when everyone sings at the same time. Right? If we're all singing at the same time, if someone has great skill, you cannot tell. And if someone is not so good, also you cannot tell. Hmm? So Vishaka was thinking, because the real artistry of the individual is not manifest when we all sing, let's sing individually. Hmm? So she said, oh, then bring the veena, Radhika can play the veena. So then Lalita went and she got the Radhika's veena and put it in the hands of Radhika. And Radhika began to play the veena. And they invited uh, Krishna and Radhika to sing. So, Shukadeva Goswami Pad, he says, Kachit Samam Mukundeina Swarajati Swarajati Amishritaha. It means that Kachit Sam Gopi was singing. Mm? And she was singing in Amishrita Swarajati. The Swaras are the notes. You know, in Western music, you have seven notes who are the swaras, and then you have the komal and tivra, flat notes and sharp notes, so they're twelve all together. But in the Vedic music, in one gram, that is in one octave, there are twenty-two srutis. And it is very difficult for anyone, if you ask some famous singer, can you sing the first sruti of sa? They cannot do it. Even if you ask them to sing a pure uh, swara, sa, purely, it's very difficult for the human being to exactly find that note because of the kapha, pitta, hmm, and vayu, the air and phlegm and bile in the throat, makes it very difficult to find the exact notes. But Shukadev Goswami is saying, swara jati amisritaha. The gopis are singing completely pure, beautiful notes, really, Shabda Brahma. Hmm? Transcendental sound. And Amisrita, Swarajati Amisrita means they're not singing the Komal and the Tivra. They're doing the, mm, the Amisrit. Pure, pure ragas which don't use the uh, Tivra and Komal notes. So they're singing. Vishaka said, wait, let's sing one by one so the skill can be expressed. Bring the Vina. So Lalita brought the Veena to Radhika to play. Now Krishna's hesitating. Why? Because 
if there's a good singer, but the good singer sits down next to a master, a master vocalist, then that good singer will feel shy in the presence of the, ma uh, presence of the master vocalist. So Radhika, Lalita, Vishaka and others, they are so brilliant. And now it's Krishna's turn to sing alone and they will sing. And uh, they'll have a singing competition. In other words, in this, one person sings and then the other person has to try to repeat that. Or even repeat it or even excel that. So then Radhika began to sing. And she was singing in such a way, very, very beautifully, with Aroha and Avaroha. The series of notes going up and down. And there are Varjit Swara, there are forbidden notes that should not be sung. But occasionally, a skilled artist can throw in one Varjit Swara somewhere, a forbidden note, and it makes an amazement. So Radhika was singing, and uh, Krishna was repeating. So then Radhika sang with Swara, Tal and Lai with the correct notes and very beautiful rhythms and speed also. And as you sing in this way, then you come to the place called the sum. The sum is the end of that particular recital. It has to end on exactly the right beat. So the swara and the lie and the tal, the beat, the notes and the speed, everything has to meet at one point and that's the end. And if you if you are very expert, you can do it. But if you are not so expert and you miss the sum, that exact moment, then the whole raga, everything is ruined. So Krishna is under pressure now. <laughs> so then the Radharani began to sing. And Krishna was then repeating. Oh, he's very good, he's quite good. So then Radharani began to sing and do very clever things. She was... Uh, Krishna sang and Krishna to try to trick Radharani. He hid one matra. One matra means a beat. Because when you have different tal, different rhythms, you can, some of them have three matras, some have four, some have five beats, some have six, seven, five and a half, seven and a half, nine and a half, like this, 16, 17, 18. So Krishna was thinking, I'll trick Radharani. She will not be able to, uh, to catch me. I'll slip in one extra matra, one extra beat there, and see if she notices. So then, Krishna was singing, and Radhika said, Ah, Chiko, oh, he slipped in one extra matra there, one extra beat. So then when Radharani was singing, she was singing in such a way, and Krishna thought, Oh, I've defeated her now. But when it came to the TA at the end, the TA is the embellishment, the alankar at the end, so then Radharani slipped an extra matra into the tihe, like that. And then she brought it down to the sum. So Krishna, he tried a trick but it didn't work. So then Radharani she began to sing and she also very cleverly slipped in one matra. And then Krishna was singing and he missed it. And then all the, uh, all the sakis of Radhika were saying, Jai Jai Si Radhe. So in this way, Radha and Krishna are playing musical games together and Radhika defeats, defeats Krishna. So then, Kachit Samam Mukundena Swara Jati Amishrita. Shukadev Goswami says, Kachit Sam Gopi. Because Shukadev Goswami, he does not, he will not speak openly the names of the Braj Gopis. Because when he was about to speak the, the uh, Rasalila to Shukadev Goswami, then in his samadhi, Radhika, Lalita and Vishaka came in his samadhi and said, Shh, don't say our names. <laughs> so now Shukadev Goswami is describing the Leela, but he's just saying Kachit. It's some Gopi. Some Gopi has done this, some Gopi has done that. But our great Acharyas like Sanatan Goswami, they have revealed the names. So Sanatan Goswami in his commentary, he apologized. He said that, it's a well-known fact that if you have servants, you never tell your secret to your servant. Why? Because the servant's mind is uh, more restless than your mind and they may speak it out to someone. So what can I do? I am Dasya Radhika. <laughs> I am my servant. 
some might mind this restless and what Shukadev Goswami has not said, but I have said it. Oh, may all the saints please forgive me. <laughs> so we know who here, Shukadev Goswami say, Kachit Samam Mukunde Na Swarajati Amisritaha. Gopis are singing in the very pure notes, not mixed. And Kachit Gopi here means Vishaka. Why? Because when Krishna was singing, Hmm? Vishaka thought, oh, he has some hesitation, so let me give him some support. So Vishaka began to sing, and she mixed her voice in with Krishna's voice. Hmm? So if you cannot sing so well, someone who is expert, though Krishna is so brilliant, Gopi is just more brilliant. If someone is more expert, they can sing along with you, and then your two voices resonate together, and then they can help carry you. So as Krishna was singing, to give Krishna more confidence, take away his hesitation, Vishaka Saki, she mixed her voice in with Krishna's voice. And she began to do the Aroha. Take the, the rag up and up and up. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. And as it went up, it came to a certain stage where Krishna's voice couldn't go any further. But Vishaka continued. So then, See, Krishna said, Onindya Pujita Tena Priyata Sadhu Sadhviti. Shukadev Goswami is saying, When Krishna saw that Vishaka went up and up in the Raga to the notes that Krishna himself could not reach, then Krishna, he just became silent and he clapped his hands. Then he said, Sadhu Sadhviti, Sadhu Sadhu. That means, Bravissimo. <laughs> well done, well done. And Krishna was so. Uh, pleased with Vishaka that he honored her by taking off his pitamba. He took off his upper cloth and put it around the shoulders. You know, in Vedic culture, when you want to honor someone, you have to give them a chada. <laughs> right? So Krishna took his pitamba, his chada, and put it around the shoulders of Vishaka. So now Vishaka, she went up and up, and then she came down, down, down to the sun. And Krishna said, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. So then, Lalita became very inspired. So then Lalita mixed her voice with the voice of Vishaka. And then Vishaka, she withdrew from singing. And Lalita, she went up and up. Shukadev Goswami said, Tadeva Dhruvam Unninye. That Lalita Saki, she did not even only go up with the Unninye. Unninye. Not only did she go up with the Raga, but Tadeva Dhruvam, she changed the Tao. So she's keeping the beat and she was singing Ekatal. So Ekatal has how many beats? 12. Ekatal has 12 beats. But as she was going up at a particular point, then she changed the Tal to Dhruv Tal, which has 14 beats. And now singing in 14 beats, then she bought it. And she went up and she did so many beautiful Alankars there. And then from Dhruv Tal, she came back to Ekatal and then she brought it down by the Avaroha da, 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 and down to the sun. Oh, Krishna was amazed. Lalita Saki has shown even more skill in singing than Vishaka Saki. So Krishna had already given his pitambar. He didn't have an extra pitambar. So then Krishna, he took off some rings from his fingers. Krishna was pulling the rings from his fingers and a necklace as well and gave a necklace and some finger rings to Lalita. And Lalita was very happy to get Krishna's prasadi, prasadi ornaments. Huh? Huh? So then, Shimati Radhika, who was playing the veena to accompany the singing, now Radhika also became inspired. So then she mixed her voice with the voice of Lalita. And then Radhika went up and up and up. Actually, the human voice can sing in three grounds. That means 66 srutis. So wherever you start, that's the first sruti. And you can go up to the 60, 66 srutis. But if you try to go to 67, then your voice will break. <laughs> hmm? But the gopis are not like that. They're beyond the capacities of human beings. They can go up and up and up and up without any limit. So Radharani then she began to sing and she went up and then she started to do alap. And then she changed the towel. And then she was doing alap in a different towel. And then Radhika did Varjita Swara, a forbidden note. So usually when people do a forbidden note, it's because they sang the wrong note. 
and it sounds not very pleasant like jazz. <laughs> but Radhika, she <laughs> she did the exact Vajitswa at the right moment and everyone became struck with wonder. And then she changed the Tao back to the original Tao and came with Avaroha down, 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 down and exactly on the sun, then she finished. Then, now Krishna, he's already given away his Pitambara, he's already given away his rings, what can he do? Tumi mori dili bahu alam amulya ratan ami kichuditi nari karya lingan Oh Radhika, you have given me so many jewels of emotions through your singing. There's nothing I can do to repay you except to give you my alinga embrace. So then, oh, Krishna embraced Chimati Radhika. And just as Radhika was coming down to the sun, she was thinking, now after I have sung, then who will sing next? Huh? No one will dare to sing next and then our musical summit will be over. Our musical conference will be finished and that will not be good to come to the climax and then just end like that. So as Radharani was coming down with the Avaroha, then with her hand she signaled to the other gopis. And so as she hit the sun, then everyone began to sing together again. So all began to sing, but it was established. Who is Vidagda? Who is Vidagda? Shimati Radhika is Vidagda, the most artistic of all the gopis of Praja. So, Vinita Karana Puna Vidagda Patamanvita. Patamanvita means Radharani is cunning, very, very clever. One day, she was coming from Yava, her mother-in-law's house, with her sakis. And on the way, she was passing a place where Sri Krishna was milking cows, Terkadamba. As she was approaching, then Lalita Saki said, Oh Radhika, we should not go this way because there's one notorious boy there. He may cause some trouble for us. Radharani said, I am not afraid of him. What can he do to us? And as Radharani was walking past, then Krishna was milking the cow, then he squeezed the udder of the cow in such a way that it sprayed milk onto the face of Radharani. Hmm? Now she looks so beautiful with the drops of milk on her angry face. Huh? Radharani's face is more beautiful when it becomes a little bit red with anger. Hmm? Kutilambru kopa barina Shona patma mi gopari Brahmatakula brahmareena Oh Radhika, I always remember your angry face. It becomes reddish like a red lotus flower and your eyebrows, you frown like this. It's like a row of black bumblebees landing on the lotus. <laughs> so Krishna, sometimes he does things to make Radharani and only to see that face. <laughs> so that's why he squeezed it other of the cow and squirted him. So then Radharani, she continued on her way, but she was still eager to see Krishna. But just then, Jyotila was coming. And Jyotila, she never lets Radhika get near Krishna or look at Krishna. So then Radharani said, what can I do? So then, she was wearing a beautiful pearl necklace and Radharani, she pulled it and broke the string and all the pearls, pearls fell on the floor. Then Radhika said, oh my dear Saki, my favorite pearl necklace is broken and now I have to find them. So she got on her hands and knees 
and it took a long time to try to find in the dust of Brad all the various pearls and while she was picking them up she could sneak another look at Krishna even in the presence of Jatila her mother-in-law so Radhika is called Patamangita he's very cunning very very intelligent so beneath Karna Purna Vidagda Patamangita so oh, what happened we had yesterday we spoke about 12 qualities of, of Radhika up to Vidagda and now we told Pataman only 13. So yes. now it's still another 12 are left and it became so late. Yes. Alas, alas. So this kata of the qualities of Radhika will have to put it up to rest for today. <laughs> Gaur Premanande Hari Hari